How much does it cost to do an oil change on a Lamborghini? Welcome back YouTube. Today I'm going to attempt to answer that question. Welcome back to the channel YouTube. Thanks again for joining me today. I am tackling my first oil change on my 2004 Lamborghini Gallardo. I have officially owned this car for one year as of last week. The previous owner had done a fresh service oil change on it right before I got the car. I really didn't drive it a whole lot of mileage over the course of last spring and summer, but as I prepare for this cruise season, as summer is just right around the corner. We're going to go ahead and get this thing freshened up. I've been servicing things all winter long. If you follow the channel, you've kind of seen that. So today we're going to go ahead and tackle the oil change. I can, beyond the shadow of a doubt, say the top two questions asked in the one year that I have owned this car is, number one, what do you do for a living? Because everyone thinks if you own one of these cars that you are absolutely loaded. The other one is, is how much does an oil change cost on that car? I don't know if it's just the most relatable service to the average person and their daily driver that they're curious, or if it's just the mystique and the unknown about these cars, people seem to have some pretty ungodly prices in their mind. I personally haven't reached out to a dealer or a shop, so maybe you guys can chime in and let me know what some of you have paid for a service. I have heard online anywhere, six, eight, nine hundred, a thousand dollars. I don't know what's accurate. I can show you exactly what it's gonna cost me today. So here's what I'm working with. If you guys follow the channel, you know I like to use Amsoil products. I'm using the European 5W40. Choose whatever brand you like. Doesn't really matter. I'm not here to discuss that. I picked up a oil filter housing wrench for these cars. I've heard of other people doing it with other tools. It is tight quarters. I picked one of these up. This is just a generic. It's been laser cut and sold by someone on eBay for roughly $30. I don't remember exactly what I paid. I picked it up shortly after I bought the car knowing it was going to be a while. I then reached out to Glenn Huffman at AMH Exotics. I got a genuine Lamborghini oil filter for the car. He's been a huge source of help for questions and genuine parts anytime i've reached out to them and got those in roughly two days uh, it also comes with the o-rings for the filter i choose not to use the chinese brock filter again i'm not going to get into filter choice but i am going to stick with genuine filters for this car as well as a couple of copper crush washers for my drain points if you're changing the oil in an lp car Unfortunately, you have a few more steps than I've got going today. I believe you've got like seven grain points or something like that on that car. Maybe some of you guys can let me know how tedious that is. So anyway, let's go ahead and dig into this and get started. Oh, before I forget, I told you I would answer the question, what does this cost? So I've got my receipts right here. Again, AMH Exotic Parts. This is where I oiled my filter and the crush washers. You can see the oil filter price. Right here was $59, a dollar a piece for the crush washers, shipping and everything else for a grand total of $75 if you include that. Then I've got Amsoil. I purchased several other things, but amongst all of those things on this receipt is the 540 European oil at $11.89 a quart. So roughly $194 total if you would like to include the initial purchase of the filter wrench filter housing wrench for roughly another $30, then that would put me a little over $200 total plus. Uh, we'll see how long it takes. I'm guesstimating roughly an hour of my time for this oil change. So now that we know what it costs, let's get started. All right, guys, for starters, there's several good YouTube videos out there. 
as far as the oil change videos go on these cars. I really don't anticipate on showing you guys anything different than any of those videos. I don't have any magic tricks or anything. Like I said, this is my first oil change on this car. So if nothing else, uh, maybe it will be comical as I blunder my way through the first oil change on this. As we get back here, you will see, hopefully, just tuck way down in there under the intake plenum. That is our housing. So I got a couple vacuum lines or whatever they are right there. I'm going to try to remove and get out of the way so I can get my fat stubby little fingers and that little wrench down in there and we'll see if we can get that thing broken loose first. Seem to slip off with a nice gentle tug. I'm just going to tuck them out of the way. And much like I have seen others do in an attempt to contain any mess, I'm going to stuff paper towels as best I can all around there to absorb any sloppage which will most likely take place because I am rather sloppy and Lord willing we will snake this fancy little tool in here and with any luck be able to break this loose without a whole lot of effort and luckily she is slowly moving my fear was, and one of the reasons for tackling this first, is that if there was a problem with this, I wanted to find it first. Being a 20-year-old plastic housing, I don't know if it's ever been replaced before. Sometimes those inner tabs in here are notorious for breaking, and God help me, had someone wrenched and reefed this on there and over-tightened it, you could be in for a battle. Given this is the first time I'm doing this, this is a learning experience. Kind of like so. Uh, the filter stayed in there. Not sure if it wasn't installed properly. It doesn't look like my tabs are broken off in there. There, you can get a little bit of light in there and see them. So we'll get that filthy little thing out of there and we'll see if we can get the new one snapped in. So with things out of the car here you can see we can get a much better look at things and uh, get these o-rings swapped over housing everything looks like it's in great shape i was worried those tabs might be broken off maybe this has been replaced before maybe it's just in great shape i don't know so we'll use a little pick we're going to dig that o-ring off of the canister as you can see there in the bottom here there's already a small new one there and i did notice as soon as i pulled this out this was running a generic Probably one of those Brock filters, not a, a genuine Lambo. It's a little bit collapsed. Uh, looking through the pleats and inspecting things. Everything looks really clean as it should. I don't see any issues or anything like that. Use a little bit of fresh oil to lube these O-rings. I don't want to split it, tear it, or damage it in any way. So we wrestle it on and off. Just make sure it's seated right in that little groove it's supposed to real nice like. And I'm going to go ahead and lube this one as well while things are out. And we've got the small ears here and the larger ones. Those smaller ones are supposed to align with the tabs in the housing there. We'll see if we can get that aligned and get that snapped into place. Just like so. And that seems to hang up in there okay. So now we're ready to stick this back in the car get this thing tightened down and again remember guys don't over tighten this this is plastic and if it's original it is old the tighter you squeeze this down does not give it a better seal that's not how these work so just be warned and aware of that Get that as snug as I can by hand, and then we can use our fancy little tool to snug it down the rest of the way. And don't forget to hook up those vacuum lines once you're done. So 
So now that we are under the car, I will try to find the two drain points. One is just back here by the starter, eight millimeter hex bit right up here on the dry sump. I'm gonna go ahead and drain that first. And then we'll come back here and another eight millimeter hex bit right here. Now both of these crush washers I received are slightly different sizes or diameters. So I'm gonna make sure that when they come off with these, so I don't double them up and make sure I get the right ones in the right place. And I did get this warmed up a little bit before I got started. That way, hopefully, help the oil start draining a little bit. I believe from the research I've done that the torque spec is 45 Newton meters on these. Given this especially is all aluminum, I'm probably just gonna snug them down till they're hand tight. The one thing I don't want to do is over tighten them at all and create an unnecessary problem. I'll let that one drain good and then we'll move back here to that one. So I cleaned up the sump drain plug. I've matched up my crush washer. We'll get that replaced. So you can see, hopefully the camera will pick it up. This one is pretty mangled. So maybe it wasn't changed last time. Maybe it was over torqued, I don't know. Either way, all the more reason not to reuse them. Get that one installed and we'll drain the other one. So I thought I had my camera on breaking this one loose. Apparently I did not. This thing was way over tight. There was no need for that to be on there as tight as it was. I will definitely not be putting it back on that snug. Then we'll let that drain, clean up this plug and get it reinstalled. Then we can move our way back up top. All right guys, with filter change, oil drain, plugs all back in snug and in place. We're gonna remove the oil dipstick. And according to procedure, we're gonna add about six quarts. Where we're gonna fire the car up, idle it for one minute, recheck and add the rest, roughly 10 quarts. Uh, once we get that in there into a suitable range there, we will take this thing for a little drive, get it warmed up, and we will go through the oil check procedure itself once we're up to temperature idle it at 2000 rpm for a couple minutes get out and check and make sure that this thing is right on we don't want to underfill it and we don't want to overfill okay guys so we just finished adding our six quarts do a quick confirmation make sure we've at least got oil on the dipstick oh yeah all the way up there so now we're going to go ahead and fire up the car we're going to run it for one minute Shut it down and recheck our oil level. All right, so it's been one minute. Ideally, that circulated the oil out of the dry sump here since it was starting to fill up. We'll see where things are at here, and it appears we barely have oil on the last three quarter inch or so of the dipstick, which is kind of what we're looking for. So now we should have room to add this and continue to add until we get to a proper level. Then, like I said, we'll take this thing out, drive it, get it up to temperature, and we will go through our oil engine oil check procedures per the manual. All right guys, we pretty much got 10 quarts in there to get it to a level it needs to be. We've got adequate oil pressure in there on the gauge, car's warming up. Go ahead and take it for a gentle spin here and uh, we'll come back and go through the oil check procedure. Just out for a gentle little drive guys, nothing too spirited, not 
pushing the car hard, just, just warming it up, getting it up to temperature. Not that it's a nice day here by any means, but it's at least dry. I haven't been able to drive this car in, in quite a while. All I've been doing is going through it and doing minor repairs and upgrades and servicing this car pretty much since fall. So I am uh, really, really miss driving this car. I'm anxious to get it back out here on some sunny days and put some more mileage on it. And Lord willing, after all the service work I've been doing this winter, it's good and ready to go. One more project before spring I'm hoping to squeeze in so stay tuned for that I've got parts on order unfortunately like everything else they're not high demand items not everybody just has stuff readily available so it's not always easy to get just within a few days so uh, yeah I'm not gonna ruin the surprise quite yet but stay tuned you want to see a little more work and one more larger project and upgrade for the car before springtime okay well continue our little little loop here to get up to temperature like I said we'll go home and, and go through the procedure make sure things are right where they need to be uh, this car sounds absolutely incredible with the new fab speed system and cats deleted on it I don't think the microphones in these cameras do it any justice So now that we're back home after the drive, everything's all up to temp, we're going to go ahead and do our 2 minute 2000 RPM hold and then we'll shut her down, get out and recheck the fluid level there. I'm not sure if the camera will pick up that nice, clean, clear new fluid, but we are uh, right spot on. Took all 10 quarts, put us right where we need to be. So really the only thing left to do is just kind of give my filter housing and get under there and look at the drain points, make sure there's no leaks anywhere, got everything sealed up good and tight. And we should be good, Lord willing, with the amount that I drive the car for another year. So uh, really all in all, for my first time, not not bad pretty straightforward no hiccups or issues or anything like that that i ran into this is definitely a as simple of a diy on these cars as it gets don't be afraid to tackle it uh maybe somebody out there found it helpful and in the big scheme of things you know 200 dollars roughly to change the oil in this car i mean yeah it's not the wife's camry i'm not going to get away with 50 dollars by any means but uh considering that the duramax cost me roughly 135 dollars filter and oil and everything for a change on that it's it's not that bad. It's not, not undoable by any means. So anyway, I really would like some of you guys that have paid maybe a dealer or an independent shop to uh, let me know what you guys have paid. I'm kind of curious what I may or may not have saved, if it's worthwhile uh, finding out I save any sort of money is usually what motivates me to keep wrenching on this thing. So anyway, thank you all for watching. Hit the like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. I truly appreciate it. Like I said, stay tuned for more. Thanks again, guys.